Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery, quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pole. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pole. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Flu season, be prepared. Get your immunizations now at Rose City Drug, your one-stop pharmacy, home health care, and medical supply outlet. Offering a variety of on-site immunizations. Walk-ins are, of course, welcome. Call now for more information. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Michigan Magazine. I'm Mary Stutzman as we hit those Michigan back roads first on horseback as we learn more about natural horsemanship from Sean Beardsley of Liberty Fines. We'll be joining a class of students Sean is instructing on this form of horse handling and training that is sweeping the country, adding the element of love, patience, and determination into the equation, making horseback riding and competing an exciting and pleasant experience for both the horse and the rider. Then in to the wilderness of Aranac County to visit with folk artist Gregory Madden. From antlers, bone, and wood, Greg creates pieces of art that is not only beautiful, but also useful. Stay tuned, it's all coming up on this week's Michigan Magazine. Vacation. Don't make the planning of it more than what you're trying to get away from. At NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com, you can choose from over 2,500 cabins, cottages, lodges, resorts, lakefront vacation home rentals, and more. Whatever experience you're looking for, from rustic to luxury and everything in between. No more rustling with telephone books. No more endless internet searches. Just one site with over 2,500 Northern Michigan destinations. NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com Exploring Michigan's wilderness trails on the back of a horse can't be beat. And with the advent of what's termed natural horsemanship, the experience can become a bit spiritual when you and your mount are in tune with each other in mutually respectful ways. We learned of this process of horse training from Sean Beardsley of Liberty Pine Stables near Rose City. Sean conducts classes and clinics on natural horsemanship. It's a method where the horse seems to be anxious to please his master simply because training is non-aggressive, painless, and fun for the horse and trainer. Horses seem to be anxious for the classes to start. On today's edition, we take you back to Liberty Pines where Sean invites our viewers in on one of her classes in hopes of stirring the equestrian spirits that may be lying dormant in some of us. Hi, welcome to Liberty Pines. We're here today with uh, three students and we're going to be working on getting our horses respectful walking next to us and with the backup. We're going to work on the backup and really get our horses listening to our body. Today we've got Gabby over here. She's eight years old. She's working with my horse Topper and Lexi, she's got her quarter horse, I think, I believe he's a six-year-old. And Don is with Trooper, and Trooper's a young uh, four-year-old. And I've got Miss Pine, and she's also four. All right, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to start out on the wall, and we're going to walk our horses and drive the horses front end away if you have to. We're going to walk next to the wall and we're going to be working at getting our horse to stay out of our space so that there's safety. And when I say we're going to ask for the horse to stop and back up with us, keep them right against the wall, Gabby, if you can. Okay, let's try a stop. Put your stick in front of the drive line and ask the nose to come back. The drive line is anything from the shoulders up will make your horse go back. Anything from the shoulders back will get them to go forward. You'll also use your drive line to show, to turn the horse away. So I put my stick in front of the drive line up by their nose.
If they start getting better and better, you can add a little bit of speed to it. So everyone come out from the wall a little bit and let's drive your horse's nose and head in the other direction. Good job, Gabby. Good job. Oh, you did a 360. <laughs> We're gonna head in the other direction. So just drive him back around and we're gonna head this way. And I'm gonna switch sides because we wanna work both sides of the horse. And this is gonna be harder for all of them. Okay, Gabby, you wanna be on the inside of the ring now. And this is always a little bit tougher for the horse because you're talking to a different eye. Come on. Don thinks he's ready to go a little bit faster with Trooper. Give him some energy behind the driveline, Don. More energy back there. Good job. Whoa. No. Okay, that's all right. Just. Pull him back around and when you want to back, if they're not backing, you can either touch the clasp on your lead rope or you can touch them on the chest. Good job. Just show them that you want him on that side. Point, point to him. Good. Now bring it forward. And whoa, Gabby, go ahead and walk forward. I'm gonna help Gabby out for a minute here. Lexi, do you need any help? No. You're gonna have your carrot stick back like this, dragging. When you wanna stop, you're gonna bring it forward and I just kind of wave it in front. If they're not listening, you can tap your lead rope, the clasp, or you could tap the chest. If the nose comes in, you're gonna drive their nose away, okay? Then put your stick back, okay? How's it going, Gabby? Good. Okay, stop, Gabby. Bring your stick and touch the clasp. There you go, good. Okay, put your stick back behind you and walk. Stay a little bit back by his shoulder again, but go ahead, show him to go. Come on top, go ahead, point. Good. We'll work on some backing up in front of our horse. Everybody give yourself some space. All right guys, let's try on working part of just backing from the front of the horse. You're gonna put your lead rope down and you're going to first ask with your finger. If they go sideways, you're going to move their hips. Straighten them up. Good. Okay, then you're going to ask them to come forward. Smile at them. Straightness is the hardest part. Miss Pine's pretty new at this game, so it's good to show what a new horse is gonna do if they are got some energy in them. As we spent the morning with Sean in her class, we were impressed at the attention and dedication she gave each student, stressing the point of safety with your animal, the number one concern. Firm but gentle were the words of the day. Once you have that instilled in your mind, you and your horse will have a great and rewarding future ahead of you. The class progressed that morning to various aspects of implementing natural horsemanship and would like to share that with you on a later edition of Michigan Magazine. Sean went on to explain that even though today's class seemed fun and productive, the process demands dedication and consistency, which eventually will reap huge rewards. You must remember, if you're thinking of entering the world of horsemanship, 
Horses can be very dangerous animals, and safety must be the number one priority in your life, as well as realizing that with ownership comes a huge responsibility in the care and upkeep of the animal. Your new equestrian friend will be depending on you for everything, from feeding, grooming, and hygiene, to love and discipline. They do become literally part of your family, and with that said, the many years together can yield immeasurable rewards in fun and companionship. For more information, contact Sean at Liberty Vines, and stay tuned for more on the world of natural horsemanship here on Michigan Magazine. A big thanks to Sean, Don, Gabby, and Lexi for sharing their morning with us. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Jerry's Joint at West Branch, some of the best burgers in town. Jerry's has a full menu, but when you order the burgers steaming hot, they're made the way you like it. Stack time, made to order, add fries, and you've got a complete meal. Jerry's Joint of West Branch, home of the best burgers in town. Discount Foods, Downtown Mayo. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods, Downtown Mayo. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mayo. Michigan Magazine has been on the road since 1989, putting well over one million miles on our vehicles. 90% of those have been Michigan back roads. Exploring the unexplored, discovering the undiscovered, the true artists and craftspeople. From the outstanding and nationally renowned to the quiet, unsung heroes, carving out their own unique niche, doing what they love, a love readily expressed and recognized in their works. We usually find these artists deep in the Michigan rural areas surrounded by the inspiring forests and seclusion. Today we find ourselves in a beautifully wooded area just off M30, south of West Branch and north of Gladwin. Well, in this edition of Michigan Magazine, we're in the wilderness of northern Michigan, uh, in your Ogemaw County and Gladwin County with yeah. Gregory Madden. Gregory, it's a pleasure to meet nice you. To meet you and what we have here is a, uh, a wood carver, a creator of things out of uh, the woods of pretty much Michigan wood, or do you uh, kind of go out of state every once in a while? Yeah, you know, some of the driftwood, you know, was given to me, and mm -hmm. you know, and uh, some I buy at the local hardware store. <laughs> so you do actually carve with usually a rotary tool. Oh, rotary tool. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you you've been doing this for how long now? Uh, since probably about 95. 95. What got you into it? How did you start? Um, you remember Dean? Dean's store across from uh, uh, Rifle oh, River? Sure, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I seen him carving, and uh, I think oh. then he was using uh, a dental tool. Oh, okay. Back, you know, before they had the rotary tools. Okay. And uh, ever since then, I was wanting to get into something like that. Uh -huh. yeah. It's kind of a love that you've developed here. Yeah. Uh, you see that you, you are a, uh, an outdoor enthusiast, but you also, not only the wood, I see you do some antler work too. Tell us a little bit about that, how you got into that. Yeah, the first thing I carved, it was a small eagle, you know, and uh, I seen it, you know, it looked kind of like ivory, and I like stuff mm -hmm. like that. Tribal carvings, you know, any type of carvings, I, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, you know, once I did that, I just, you know, really loved it and mm. just kept with it. And, you know, I kind of like, uh, you know, mythical things, whimsical, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the dragon here, uh, these are actually uh, just regular bone. I'm not sure if it's cow okay. or not, but, uh, you know, I kind of burnt it to get that look, and, okay. you know, and these are just natural antler shapes, okay. and I used them. I thought, you know, those would look like, you know, Wings. So. Right. Is that a, a common uh, white-tailed deer? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these are pretty much all white-tail, uh, except the Jesus here. This one was a mule deer. I just I like that the story. You mm -hmm. know, I'm kind of religious anyway, but uh, yeah, I think this was the second piece I ever did. And uh, how many pieces are involved in that? There's more than one piece, right? Yeah, it's just the driftwood. Uh, this is white tail, the Mary, and the Jesus is uh, mule deer. Uh, this is birch. Here, I'm not sure what the driftwood is. It, it may be a okay. 
pine. Any idea how long a piece takes you? It varies, of course. But oh, probably a common question. This was well over 300 hours. Really, this one here? Yeah, and I mean, you you got to figure out how you're going to mount everything. It's got screws, and I, mm. I try to make everything, you know, where it's hidden and where it's, you know, as sturdy as it can be. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it still is fragile. Okay. But uh, Go ahead. this... Uh, Seen here, I guess I kind of just went off the base of antlers as the theme, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, I got the ideal for the acorns and, you know, because I wasn't sure what I was going to make the fairy, you know, what kind of poles I was going to put her in. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, you know, acorn fairy, that mm, would be cool. Okay. And then the mushrooms, you know, it's just made up. <laughs> you know, they're my version and, and then the flowers, uh, I just, I call them deer flowers. <laughs> what are the flowers made out of? Uh, this is bone, and the rest is antler, and I use the bases, you know, pretty much to make the cups. And uh, the hummingbird is all uh, white tail, and uh, there's horn here from the bull, and then I got turquoise eyes. Yeah, this one, you know, I just uh, decided to put some morels on it, and... Uh, I kind of tried to make the flower look like it was growing out from under the driftwood. And this one also has a horn, is the beak. You know, I look at the antler and I just try to figure out, you know, what could come from them, right. pretty much, you know. Right. So you kind of look at what you find and decide what that's going to be, or do you have yeah. something in mind and then go hunting for that piece? Or is it one of combination? Yeah, it's, you, you kind of sit around and, you know, think of, what you can do with each piece because you know they're pretty small as it is you know and you can only do so much but yeah this one again i, I this may be pine i'm not sure uh, this was given to me and i use that for the base but uh, this is a uh, blue beach here in both the mary and jesus they're uh, white tail oh this is uh my mushroom stick here i made you know, i put a knife on it a compass and then I got a the morel up here is a mushroom brush. I see your your brother is also rather artistic also when it comes to Oh yeah that you know, isn't a stick of his or Yeah oh, this is the first thing he ever wow. carved. Incorporating antlers? Uh yeah. Okay. Yeah I told him you know that would look good in it and uh he yeah. got this uh picture out of a magazine. I'm not sure where the place Mm -hmm. is but uh he seen that and decided to curve that wow. and uh, it turned out really well yeah how about the long ball that's uh, one of your creations isn't it yeah yeah i'm uh you know just started that's the second one and uh oh. i think my third one's going to be right you had that one on the field yet oh. uh no no yeah. just uh, i practiced with it a little bit did you do the quiver too yeah the quiver i made it's uh uh red red oak and this is a uh, walnut here yeah, this pipe's made of maple here. Uh, his pipe is made of bone. And then I just I made this stand for it, and that's deer antler there with a little stone. Mm. And uh, the mouthpiece here, it's made of deer antler. And I even uh, made the fitting, you know, so you can clean it and everything. But yeah, I was doing this in the 90s early 90s and uh you know i thought maybe the deer skull would make a nice stand for those <laughs> yeah yeah these blades here were just ordered and i put the handles on them and made the sheaths for them and uh you know i incorporated brass and leather and like the button here is made of deer antler and turquoise uh this wood here is blue beach and this one's walnut. And then as you can see, I put, you know, rattlesnake skin on them. Do you have any other ultimate carving that you'd eventually like to do? Or do you have any uh, dreams? Yeah, you know, I'd like uh, to uh, do some bigger pieces mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, probably different materials. You know, how big? Life-size? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I had to, <laughs> to could go any, yeah. probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you've got quite the collection here, and this is just a sampling 
I mean, there's probably a lot out there that uh, you just couldn't get a hold of to show us. I mean, people have gotten a lot of your stuff. Yeah, I've given a lot of things away. Yeah. Well, we'd like to thank you, Gregory, for taking time of your day and uh, your artistry to share with Michigan Magazine, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. Well, thank you. Thank you very it's always a pleasure and quite the honor to be able to sit and visit with Michigan's unsung artists like Gregory Madden of Alger, a quiet and humble man creating a bit of magic in his home studio. We should also note that Gregory does do commission pieces. Besides his growing inventory of his favorite works, he says he's always open to making certain visions others have a reality into pieces of art. Where that Michigan Magazine was on the road again in search of more Michigan magic. From butchers, bakers, candlestick makers, yes, and even Indian chiefs, the tapestry of Michigan citizenry is woven tightly with brightly colored threads of diversity. It truly is a Great Lakes state. The talent and artistry of those that live here is always inspiring. Well, that's all the time we've got for this edition of Michigan Magazine. So glad you could join us. Hope you join us next week for another edition as we hit those Michigan back roads. Till then, you have a wonderful day and get out and enjoy Michigan off the beaten path. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Randy's Restaurant and Bakery, downtown Rose City. Freshly baked daily, cookies, breads, pastries, donuts, homemade pies, and more. Randy's has a full menu to tackle the heartiest appetite, including pizza and hand-dipped ice cream. Hale Hardware, your do-it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. The Art of Amalia Jonas is at the art store in Lupton, Michigan. Stop by her gallery or visit her online to purchase that perfect masterpiece or sign up for private lessons. Begin your journey in the world of art by capturing the inspiration around you under the personal direction of Amalia Jonas at the art store. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. <laughs>